Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, just doing a quick ministry update. If you saw my video um, that I put out before this, the, the, a surprise I got this morning, and introducing Declan, uh, the new addition to our family, uh, it's a dog, um, go ahead and go watch it. But in that video, if you've noticed, as I was walking one of the baby chickens back to my uh, da daughter's room, going to become a guest bedroom. Uh, you might have seen that there was a bed in the living room. <laughs> so uh, I meant to, to put this video out first and then that one, but I put that one out. Uh, what's going on here, Brothers Sisters Christ, is I'm, I'm rearranging the whole house. And as I, and I'm clean, doing a big clean. I'm moving stuff around, but I'm doing major repairs. There's, there's cracks because this is an old house. It's, it's over 30 years old. Uh, we're on the point where this house is, I think, getting breaking the 40-year mark. 40 to 45 years old um, and because uh, when I bought it it was 33 34 years old and I've been here for seven years so that's breaking the 40 year mark um, but there's cracks in the wall and there was some damage done to some of the house where there's holes in the wall uh, nail holes to me hitting the wall on accident when I was moving furniture so what I'm doing, the Lord blessed me with uh, time and finances to be able to try to fix this stuff. So I bought some putty. Um, I forgot the name. I'm not a painter, uh, but we're gonna be. I'm gonna be filling these holes, and I'm gonna be repainting a lot of the the different parts of the house, doing patchwork paint. I can't. I, I the way paint's going, I can't afford to repaint the whole house right now. But um, doing some patchwork and trying to fix some stuff up, and I'm gonna move stuff around. Um, I didn't do a before, a before video, I'm in the process of doing it, but if you've seen me here, this is one room. If you see me behind the marker board, in some of my studies I do marker board, that's one room, so there's two rooms. And if you ever see me standing before the banner, the, the, the Bible banner, and you have uh, Jesus, the lineage of Jesus, I have a chart, and then I have another chart with prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, prophecies that Jesus will fulfill will fulfill, hasn't fulfilled yet. Um, he will fulfill in the future, the, uh, the day of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven, after the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, you see me stand before that one, that's a third room. And the Lord blessed me. This was the only room I could get the internet to work in. And I had a guy come out, and the guy was very knowledgeable. He was able to find the connections underneath the house that the previous guys couldn't. And I've been praying about this really hard, about, Lord, I'd love to move everything into one room and just have one office, okay? Um, I call it ministry office, but it's an office where all three, I can have all three set up and it's in one room. I don't have to take stuff down, move, and put stuff, it's all set up where all I have to do is move the camera. If I want to stand, praise the Lord, it gives me the energy to stand and preach, I'll stand and preach. Uh, sit and preach, sit and preach. Um, stand in fellowship with the brethren, sit in fellowship. I can't do much walk and talk anymore because I have a hard time standing, holding still. Like when I try to hold something in these hands, I tend to shake and it's starting to come out more and more in the camera. And I've had brethren tell me that. It's like, it's getting hard to do walk and talk. So I do miss being able to go out on this beautiful day and walk and hold the camera and talk with you guys. Even with holding a stick, it still just seems to shake. Um, but that's what the Lord's doing for me. He's helping me. Um, and when I said that I call it a ministry office, it's not a ministry headquarters. Okay, there's no such thing as ministry headquarters. You know what the ministry headquarters is? Your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters of Christ. Thy word have I hidden my heart, that I not sin against thee. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The ministry headquarters is the man who has God's perfect written word hidden in his heart and is preaching it. That's the ministry headquarters, not a building, not a building. So that's an office. Uh, sometimes I'll refer to it as a ministry office where I can get a lot of videoing done, especially during the winter when it's really cold and it rains here a lot. Rains here a lot. So just doing an update video reason, I, I'm kind of slowing down a little bit here. Uh, I want to put out some videos for the next few weeks. I'm going to try to put out some um, courageous men, foolish men videos. If you remember that series that we do that Lord puts on my heart to encourage you to be courageous. Don't be the foolish man. Be the courageous man. Okay. And there's a lot of examples in the Bible of men that were courageous and men that were foolish. 
Sometimes you get the same man that at this moment he's being courageous and at this moment he's being foolish. And it's the same man. There's times that we've been there. Have you been there? I've been there. There's times I've been courageous in my life. There's times I've been foolish in my life. Not a fool. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Fool is someone who's lost, but you can act foolish. You can go back to doing things the world's way. Giving into the flesh and doing things the flesh's way. And you go back to looking like resurrecting that old man. You go back to looking and acting like you did when you were lost. Or looking and acting like the lost world. You can start acting foolish. So we're going to get into some of these. Uh, we're going to put the one study on hold for a few weeks about um, make sure you're proving your own selves. I really want to get into that study. I've got it, I got it down, but I want to be able to set here. But everything's getting moved in the next few days. And as we move things, they're going to get stuck in the living room. <laughs> like I said, my bed and my nightstand are now in the living room. Uh, that's where I'm sleeping. And it's, 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 there's a blessing. Have you ever found hidden blessings in things? Just a little side note, a little rabbit trail. Hidden, hidden blessings. I'm laying on that bed in the living room, and this the reason I love this old manufactured home is the previous owners decided to put in skylights, um, one in the living room, one in each bathroom, and one in the kitchen. And I hardly ever turn the lights on. I really do. Just during the winter, the sun goes down at 6 o'clock, and then I stay up till 8, so for about 2 hours I got the fire going, I have a little light going, but I don't really, especially during the summer, I don't really turn lights on any, anymore, okay? I do it for doing videos to make sure there's enough lighting for videos when I'm videotaping, but just my day-to-day -day routine, I don't hardly, I don't turn lights on, okay? But I'm laying there and I'm like, okay, this is a little different, this <laughs> this is different. You know, don't get me wrong, in my past, I've had to sleep in, bed, uh, in living rooms on, like, couches, sofa beds um, before. Uh, but this, I'm laying there, and I'm looking out the skylight, and I can see these two stars really bright, and you see the tip of the tree. Um, and some of the backyard light is reflecting off the tree, and you can still see the tree somewhat. And I'm just laying there, and it's beautiful. Just beautiful. And I start talking with the Lord and everything, and it was just, you just find hidden blessings. <laughs> it was a pain in the butt to move that bed. Uh, the mattress that I got, uh, it, weighs, it weighs more than the bed does. Um, so there's a lot of moving going on around here so I can move stuff. We get stuff plugged, get stuff painted. It's got to take a few days to dry. Then I can move stuff around some more and then it, it frees up some other wall space that needs some uh, patchwork. Um, and fixing and everything. So I'm going to be moving a lot of stuff around here. Getting things changed around and I'm really excited about getting the ministry office together where all three of those areas are in that one office. I can do this, I can do that, whatever God puts on my heart to share with you brothers and sisters in Christ. But um, just wanted to point this out that there's going to be some work going on so I'm going to try to get some studies. If I can get them done outside we'll be sitting outside talking about it. Okay, doing some crazy stuff. But I love standing when I do the courageous man, foolish man because the Bible says done all to stand. Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Striving together. We all need to be of the same mind and the same judgment. Stand, stand, stand. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the wiles of the devil. Be able to stand against this wicked world. To be able to stand against this wicked body of flesh. To be a light to this dark world. Which brings me to my final thing. Like I said in the previous video, I'm going to say it again. I'm, I keep up with the news. I just don't get. Dist I don't want to get distracted by what's going on in the world. I see what's going on in the world, and it should, brothers and Christ, it should be a motivation for you to be preaching the gospel. It should be a huge motivation to gospel track more. It should be a huge motivation for you to continue your sanctification and letting God clean up your life. It should be a motivation motivation for you to keep reading your the Bible and listening to the Bible, hiding God's word in your heart and living it, keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. That's when we look at what's going on in the world. That's the motivation we should get. And the falling away is happening big time. And brethren are looking at that and they're getting worried. And instead of getting motivated to live for the Lord, they're getting motivated to hunker down, to run out to the wilderness to hide. I've got to endure to the end to be caught up. I've got to, uh, I got to start stock up on food. I got to, like I said, go out in the boonies and hide. Okay. Remember the story that Jesus said about the hiding a candle under a bushel? You don't hide a candle under a bushel. 
You put it on the nightstand for it to light up the whole room. You're supposed to be a light to this dark world, brother, sister Christ. Now, there might be times where God says, hey, move to another city. Move, move somewhere else. You're, he's done with you here. I understand that. You move for fellowship. You move to be part of a house church, a meeting house, a prayer house, whatever you call it. But the brethren come together to serve God together, to worship God together. I can understand that. But there's this big movement in the what we call the Bible-believing, God-fearing movement where brethren are being encouraged to run out and hide in the, in the boonies. And it's okay. It's okay. No, it isn't. Okay. If you're chased out there, that's one thing. But choosing to go out there when the, the doors haven't closed to uh, preaching the gospel, I can still go down here. I do, uh, and preach the gospel to people on the on the in the beaches, hand out gospel tracts. I still lay gospel tracts places. I'm still here preaching. I still prefer, like I said, brother. I, I'd love to preach face to face to brethren. You know, have have a group of brethren come over to my house and sit down and we fellowship and we listen to good preaching, whether I'm doing the preaching or there's another brother in Christ preaching the Word of God. Okay? But coming together, that's what I long and desire. But brothers says Christ, what's going on in the world, things can be moving fast. From what I've been watching, things are moving fast, especially with the Ukraine, what's going on in Ukraine, and um, what's going on in Russia. And what's going on in the United States, seeing everything that's going on here, the complete attack, on, we're under, the, the whole United States is under attack. Our transportation's under attack. Our food industry is under attack. All this stuff's under attack. I see this stuff. I'm not just sitting here going, dee, dee, dee. I'm praying, and I'm continuing to live my life for Jesus Christ, and I'm doing my best to preach to, to the people around me. If we hit some tough, tough times, brothers and sisters of Christ, tough, tough times, God has you where you're at so you can preach. To, right now, my neighbors have it good and cushy. What happens when we hit hard, hard times? Some of them might become broken. And God has you here to preach the gospel to them. Well, I already preached the gospel. Yeah, but you haven't preached the gospel to them when they're fully broken. Okay? God has us where He wants us, okay? But despite all of this, remember, remember this. First, uh, First Corinthians, chapter one, where it says, verse nine, where it says, "But it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him." I spend a lot of time talking with the Lord about heaven, what the rewards are really going to be like, and how my heartfelt desires. I just want to be wherever Jesus is, and it's going to be in this next study. So I don't want to give too much away, but. Talking about when Jesus is in heaven, we're going to be in heaven. When Jesus comes back for the day of the Lord, the uh, kingdom of heaven, the day of the Lord, when Jesus rules and reigns for a thousand years, if you suffer with him, he shall also reign with him. The inheritance and rewards. I just want to be wherever Jesus is, and I want to be where my brothers and sisters in Christ are. He comes down here to rule and reign for a thousand years. I want to be with him. He, he's up there in heaven preparing a place with uh, for us. I want to be with him. Okay? And I talk with them about this. Brothers and Christ, despite everything you're going through, never forget and don't get so distracted on the temporal. The Bible says don't mind earthly things, the temporal, that means temporary, but always focus and remember things that are eternal. Eternity. We're going to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, serving Him. We're going to spend eternity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. There's going to come a day where we're going to all be together, no more division, no more selfishness, no more worldliness, no more dealing with this wicked body of flesh. We're going to be of the same mind and the same judgment. We're supposed to be that now, but you see how difficult it is in these last days with the falling away. But we're going to get up there and we're all going to be of the same mind and same judgment. That's where my focus is, brothers and Christ. My goal in this ministry is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and living for Him every day. Stay in His Word every day. Pray every day. Love the lost world by preaching the gospel to them and have a heartfelt desire to see them get saved like Paul did for his brethren, talking about the Jewish people. His heartfelt desire was to see them get saved. He knew a lot of them wouldn't get saved, but his heartfelt desire was he wanted to see them saved. Not go to hell. Saved.
Today I'm seeing brethren that their, their, their bitterness and their anger and their hatred, they, pre, they want to see the lost everyone go to hell. That, doesn't, that refuses to believe, he wants to see them all go to hell. Brothers and sisters, our love for brothers and sisters in Christ in these last days, that's also waning. John, turn, go back and read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John again, brothers and Christ. If you've forgotten that, yeah, we're supposed to love one another. The Bible tells us how we deal with brethren that are falling away, how we deal with brethren that are in sin. It tells us how to. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. We do it out of love. We do it with grace, understanding that the problems you have, I've had problems. God had to work on me. I've had brethren come and correct me with my problems. Okay? I need to have grace in how I correct somebody. Okay? But I don't want to go off too much of that. But brother says Christ, these last days, what we see going on out there should be motivating us to get stronger and stronger for the Lord. But what we're seeing and what's going on out there, we're seeing more brethren fall away. They're getting distracted by the world. They're getting distracted by the flesh. We need to put on the whole armor of God, brothers and Christ. I haven't finished those series of studies. We'll get back into it. But I've done some of the studies on things that uh, on parts of the armor of God. You need to be putting on the whole armor of God, brothers and Christ, especially in these last days. I don't want to be part of the falling away, and I know deep down in the heart of brethren that fell away, they didn't want to be part of the falling away. I know you, brothers and sisters, Christ, don't want to become part of the falling away. We need to do all to stand. Right? Keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, Christ, I love you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Uh, please pray for my usefulness for the Lord. In ministry, uh, like I said, I'm not full-time ministry, but no matter how small, someone had to correct me. Another thing, someone had to correct me and say, hey, you keep jumping up and down because you want all this ministry-wise. You want the house, church, you want this. Well, remember that verse, and I don't have it on me, but it talks about he who's faithful in little is faithful in much. I hope I'm not messing it up. I'd look it up. But he, he corrected me and said, listen, you need to be faithful for what little God give you. He let you put out Bible studies. Praise the Lord for it. And you know what? He's right. I need to praise the Lord more for Bible studies. For let me do Bible studies, listening to Bible studies, doing Bible studies, putting out videos for the brethren, prayer, having the Bible in my hands to actually read it and study it and hide it in my heart. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. We need to be faithful in what God has given us. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, the ministry, like I said, the whole house is, is this house is not a ministry headquarters. But this was a ministry office, and then I had other areas of the house where we were doing videoing uh, as backdrop. I want to be putting it all in one room. I want to be move, moving stuff. I'm going to be changing my daughter's room into a guest bedroom. Uh, I was talking to some brothers in Christ about um, if they're ever around, that they're welcome to, to come visit and stay. Um, and I got to thinking, I need to have a guest bedroom so I can entertain a brother in Christ or sister in Christ if the needs arise. And I need to start getting ready, because okay, there was talking about we're going through hard times, but they're not acting like we're going to go through hard times. So I'm going to be doing a lot of changes on the house. So I want to end this video because I didn't want it to be long. So I'm going to end this video with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers, brothers of Christ. Thank you for the comments where you're encouraging me. And... Thank you for the comments that lets me know that you're, you're, you're following along in, in the video and you're listening and God's using me. So thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next video.